This is how you paint an arctic char. So if you're doing a skin mount, first thing you want to do is seal the fish with a couple of coats of base coat sealer. Go ahead and whiten up the face. I like to do that. This part, like on a skin mount, this is already dark anyway. But for the sake of possibly doing a reproduction, I'm going to go ahead and whiten it out anyway. The good thing about layering with paint is you cover up a lot of stuff too that you normally would see on the skin mount. Or I can do it loud enough where I can see where everything needs to go. The good thing about doing a real fish, you can do the colors loud enough and still see your original marks stick through when you need them. So that's a good advantage of a, of a skin mount. But at the same time, a reproduction, you just have to incorporate things in. And a lot of times it's not that big of a deal anyway. Good thing about putting white on it, keeps the dead color from leaching through so much, you know, 10, 15 years down the road, you know, like on a skin mount. You definitely want the white, the belly, uh, the belly white. That's the main thing. But if you want to put a little misting over the whole fish, you can. It's no big. I've got my white, and I'm dark. Uh, lightening up my belly with white. You want it real good and wide if you can get it. If you're doing a reproduction, it wouldn't matter. The whole fish would be white right now anyway, and you'd just be incorporating the colors in, the darker colors in. Make sure your uh, belly's white and your face is good and white. Pearl. I just kind of want to put some all over the fish. Even on the belly. Give it something good to reflect off of. Now that's some white pearl, putting it on pretty heavy, and I know when I put other colors over the top of it, it's going to, those colors are going to reflect through anyway. If you were doing a, if you were doing a reproduction, uh, you just have to incorporate the dark colors in. So basically it's like I'm pearling the whole fish with it being white. So that's basically what I'm doing right now, except it's not. A reproduction. Got dark brown. So what I'm gonna do? Start from the top of the head and go all the way down to the belly with it. I mean, uh, top of the back. And go all the way down to the belly with it. 
if you were doing a reproduction and didn't have spots to work with, you would have to be just putting about a medium coat. And fading out at the belly. Or the where the red comes up just above the pictorials. That's where you'd be fading out with. And if you're doing a reproduction, just try to imagine there's no spots there to work with. And you've got dark brown. Now the fins and stuff that's cosmetic and the head and all that, that's cosmetic. We can get that later. But our number one priority right now is getting the fish, getting it right. For reproduction, you'd be fading out just above the pectoral, on the pectoral fin, uh, just above the base. And, you know, basically where the upper belly line is, um, y'all kind of got that figured out. That would be like a medium coat fading out at the belly. Okay, now I've noticed there's kind of like a faint stripe. I've just got black. This seems like it's a little bit darker. What it is, the, the belly, the, the red on the belly actually comes up into the black, causes the black to fade out right in here, in this, in this belly part about right here. It tends to fade out a little bit. It's not that the black's not there, it's just like not as, not as loud because there's, it's overlapped with uh, the orange and red of the belly right in this area and we're going to incorporate that but towards the end it seems like there's a little bit of the stripe and in them areas you get the iridescent turquoise is what i call it it seems to really take over those black areas but there again it's kind of a flip-flop color so basically it goes through here. the bottom of it goes up through here where the spots are bigger here at the belly, there's a little bit of a, well, the halos don't touch. So you get, you see more of the back. You see the, a little bit of the red and a little bit of the black. Then as you get towards the tail, the lateral line comes down from the upper part of the head. And as you get on down, the lateral line centers itself. It centers itself right in the middle of the tail. And the stripe does too. It kind of takes over the whole lateral line as opposed to just being under it like it is up at the top of the, near the head. So we're going to incorporate all that stuff in. Now I've got my black. It's just, you know, maybe vague reflections above the lateral line right in here. But for the most part, it's right at the lateral line. It ends about right there, and then here at the tail, it seems to be a little bit stronger too. There's also a stripe. And it, there's like weird places where it kind of comes down a little. But there's a slight area just above the lateral line it never fails. That's the right way to put it.
this will be lighter in the belly a little bit later when I overlap it with colors that are a little bit opaque like uh, orange so it's not wrong to mix this area right in here if you can get it maybe slightly darker So although everything else is already brown, this is black. I made my stripe pattern for the most part. But I think towards the tail, it, it uh, kind of straightens out a little bit. I mean, it's, uh, it's evenly on both sides of the lateral line. But as you get towards the head, it seems like it tapers down a little bit. That's pretty good right there. Comes back so far, about midways, about right here at the top of the pectoral fin. It's like it kind of dies down a little bit. The triangle, I mean the bottom of the triangle, it kind of comes up like this. Goes right in here. And then it kind of picks up back in towards the tail. She could put probably about a medium coat of black there. But you definitely want to stay kind of like below the pectoral towards right in here. But right now... What I see in a lot of my reference pictures, especially bigger Arctic char, not so much the little ones. On some of the char, it looks like it's basically a bunch of yellow spots that's make, that makes up the yellow on the back. It's like a bunch of real small spots. But I've seen some pictures where it didn't look like it had spots and it was still yellow. So I'm just going to take it up so far, but I'm not going to get carried away with it. But I'll show you what we do. Our next color is yellow ochre. Oh, you also want to make sure you've got a real good pearly head, you know, with lots of pearl on it. White pearl, you know, it looks really good. At least on the, the cheek and gill part. Not so much the bottom gills because they're going to be black anyway, most of the time with a spawning male. Okay, I like yellow ochre. It tends to be opaque. If you're doing a reproduction, you just put them in. I like to go all the way down to the, you know, uh, of the lateral line, maybe even a little bit into the lateral line. Good thing that pearl shows up when you put that yellow on top of it. So that's really neat. They get smaller towards the back. And just go up so far towards the Well, go as high as you want, but what it is is you want the spots kind of close together, and then what we're going to do is go back over it with a little bit of brown a little bit later. So that I'm going to work on that, and I'll show you what it, what it looks like. Okay, this is what I got so far. Now some of them are going to be red and with the turquoise halo. I do know that, but. Basically, I'm just going to where I think the turquoise halo marks are going to start. 
and the, and the red marks. Of course, the red marks go all the way up into the back as well. So we're probably going to go over some of these colors with bright orange anyway. I just want to make sure you kind of follow what I'm doing. You know, dipping down into the where the lines are going to be a little, but not real heavy. And we go ahead and do the head. Now what we're trying to do is get have a good pearly, you know, pearly yellow with at least cheek area. And we're going to incorporate black in a little bit later. Anywhere you think you might have a little bit of yellow, go ahead and put it in. A yellow ochre again. Now we're going to lightly go over the back with it. And there again, I want to fade out right out about where the stripe starts. We're kind of following that vague stripe. And that's where I want it to kind of fade out at. Now the big stripe started almost at the lateral line anyway, towards the head, and then worked its way towards the middle of the tail, towards the end. So I think I've got it about where I need it. And that would probably be about a, oh gosh, I don't know, maybe a medium coat. Means make sure the head is good and pearly. That's a good thing about bright yellow is the pearl shines through, but not so much on yellow ochre because yellow ochre is so opaque. So you may have to put more pearl over it. Okay, I've got pearl. I went ahead and pearl over the... Or the whole fish, no, well, no, uh, mainly the head, maybe a little on my back. <clears throat> Everything else was already pearl. Uh, that was white pearl. You know, I've got bright yellow, and I'm just going to go over the white pearl. Um, I kind of yellowed it out pretty good, white, whitened it out pretty good. And we're also going to go along the back and fade out at the lateral line. And I'm just going to go along the back, no lightly, and try to fade out right at the lateral line. Oh, 
Oh, this is also a good color for all your fans. And cars your fins if you have to. You know, watch out for all this spray. Billy's gonna get red anyway, so that's gonna help out a lot. So I guess about a medium coat. Just make sure you're letting the pearl shine through, that helps. Okay, now I've got dark brown again. It's kind of like a, a back darkening sequence right here. I'm gonna go down on the side because there's a little bit of that yellow over there. But right around the nostrils, it starts to get it a little bit. Uh, this is controlled spray right here. Seems like around the eye. And of course it kind of jumps back up here at the gills. So about like that. right along the top of the back. Right now is a good time. Uh, probably should have cleaned the eye off already, but we'll get it a little bit later. We'll go right along the back, very top. Good color for get the any repair work on the back, or even any repair work you got to do before you start your fish. Our brown's always been good for that. There is a seam right along the back that can get this color pretty good. And you want to fade out, you don't want to kill the yellow out completely, but you definitely want that, uh, this is kind of like a tinning method right here, like you're tinning the stripes a little. Maybe a little bit of a cover to it, but. And that's more than good enough. Sometimes I've seen even what looks like little lines come down between the yellow spots. But that's good enough. I'll show you what we do next. Well, now is as good a time as any to go ahead and clean the eye off. It's not wrong to use a exacto knife and get real close. The reason I'm doing this now is I know I'm going to be darkening the eye and I won't have to worry about a white ring if I go ahead and clean my eye off now. Still got my dark brown. And you want this color fade out at the lighter line, but you don't want to kill the yellow out. So it's definitely a blending operation there.
bright orange. And I want to go along the bottom, head around the belly. And you want to fade out just above the pectorals. And this is a neat color right here now. It's opaque, it's not very transparent. So we're gonna do a balancing act in this area right here is what I'm getting at. Make sure you use good reference material, that's a must. Try to concentrate your spray where it needs to go. I went ahead and yellowed these spots out that I didn't want to lose since I'm doing the skin mount. So that's what's going on with that. fade in like that it's kind of a tricky color you got to be careful with it Now what I'm doing right now is kind of setting up for the gill red. So the opacity of the orange is kind of a good thing as long as you as long as you're care, careful with it. Okay, there's an area right here where the red kind of reaches up into the stripe. It starts about behind the anal. It the red comes up into here. You know, you can see traces of it. Then it comes around through here, and then it comes down about right here. So this area right here is going to get some red. I mean orange first. It may not hurt to put maybe just one or two passes over the back. Just enough to, almost like gold toner, just very lightly. And you can even probably choose not to and it'll be okay. Okay, the face gets hints of it as well. Just kind of real light. Let your individual fish tell you how it needs to go. Kind of tapers off right, right above where the maxillary starts where it tends to look like it stops. bit better view of the kite. You can see where I put orange on the end. I'm going to use this orange to go ahead and put a coat on all the bottom fins anyway. It's 
and the tail. I mean, the dorsal may have orange, so I'll let your reference be your guide. Off. Every fish is different according to the spawn and even individual fish. And you probably don't want to put on too hard, but you know, just like a medium to light coat would be fine. You might could go over just a hair, but you, I kind of want to keep that yellow if I can a little. You know, I've got gill red. And we're applying this here where we apply the orange. That's the fins, uh, the belly. Even where, even where we put the orange up into the stripe, we're covering that as well. We're even covering the fins. And the red on these fins can be intense. But let your reference be your guide. All for the time in the spawn determines how red the fins are. Or orange, I guess is the right word. Now you can always go back over with the orange again. If it's too heavy. But I'm going to show you what we do next. And make sure you get the belly real good underneath too. Everywhere you put the orange. And stronger on the belly and lighter as you go up. So actually... The belly is supposed to be probably the heaviest concentration. Of course, you want to fade out just above the pectorals and rise you get to the gill plates. You want to fade out about right in, looks like about right in front of the pectoral. If you could fade out right there, that'd be great. But I'll show you what we do next. Okay, I'm gonna fix it where I went a little bit too far under the throat. And I really did. I went, went a little bit too far with the red, wasn't thinking. But below the pectorals, The orange is faded out completely, or the red. Well, there's a little streak right here on, on the very little bit, but I 
I think that's it right there. I figured it might not be a bad idea to go ahead and Get these lips with a little bit of it, and you know, maybe just change the value of the orange and not really make it red, but maybe get a little bit of a more intense orange color. But I'll show you what we do next. Probably not a bad idea to go ahead and just hit a little bit up here on the soft dorsal, maybe even the But I'll show you what we do next. Okay, yeah, I've got a little uh, base coat sealer and <clears throat> just kind of want to see what I've got so far. It looks pretty good. But I'll show you what we do next. Okay, now we're going to put in all the turquoise spots. Uh, the lighter you can go with this, the better off. Try to hit it dead on. And uh, do every spot you see like that. I'll go ahead and get this done and show you what I've got. Well, here's what I got so far. <clears throat> I'm going to get less numerous with them above the stripe area. I'm going to start getting less numerous with them. Uh, fewer and far and farther in between and smaller. So smaller and farther in between as you get up towards the top. And I'm going to be a little bit uniform with it. Okay, I'm working on breaking the pattern up. <clears throat> I'm getting where I'm being more sporadic with, with my spotting. In other words, I'm skipping and leaving some of the yellow ones, but that's <clears throat> that's on purpose. So I'm definitely making them smaller. the stripe or even close to it I'm getting most of them still not getting all of them but getting a lot of them and it doesn't hurt to make a different spot well, that's looking pretty good These fans and that, the pelvic and the anal, tend to get a little bit more of the gill red color. So they're at least as intense as the belly, if not maybe a little bit more, you know, at least on the ends. So 
So I went back to my Peel Red. And I'm gonna put it back in. It just takes a second and I don't wanna forget, so. So I wanna definitely, at least on the ends, add a little bit more intensity. Tail, I think, is about right. Maybe a little bit more on these. Well, I'll show you what we do next. I figure before I get too ahead of myself, I might as well go ahead and start darkening the the face up it's already standing out a little bit i see i see i see what could be considered black but i do also see hints of brown in there too so i'm going to go uh, do some touching up with my brown got a pretty good reference picture here's a reference picture i'm using it's a pretty good one got a lot of color in it and it's facing the same way so that's a plus. I want to get carried away here. Okay, so we got carried all the way to the end right there. And we're going to whiten that up a little bit later anyway. I know this, the Max Hillary gets. It doesn't always get completely blacked out. But that's what we got so far. Now we're going to trim all this in white also, so there's still some things to be done, in other words. The cheeks pretty dark. All oh, this is pretty dark. That's all right. We're doing good. We're going to touch back up with white later. It doesn't hurt to outline outline these with black because they get black. Around the eye. Up around the nostril. If I like it good enough, I may not even use anything else. I want to kill that yellow eye completely, but I definitely want to make it look like, you know, it's pretty dark.
go ahead and do a little bit of shading on this thing anyway. A little angles for you. Just off that yellow just a hair. Not even enough to be noticeable. About as much as I put on the back earlier. That's it right there. Just to get maybe a hint, I mean possibly. Turquoise pearl to go over the turquoise that I put. making the pearl extend out past the turquoise a little bit. You know, I don't want to get too happy with it and mess my fish up. If you wanted to play it safe, you could just not get much larger than the turquoise spot. And you can't go wrong that way. But you do every spot like that, and then I'll show you what we do next. Okay, now I've got gill red. Now what I want to do is make a small dot because I'm going back over the with the gill red with orange. Sounds funny. That's what I'm doing. Well, here's what I've got so far. got orange and basically what I'm doing is going over all my red and leaving and of course the gill red is going to show through some I don't want to kill my gill red out completely Well, the gill red wasn't vibrant enough for me. It was too dark. But I did <clears throat> go over all my spots with gill red. But I just as soon just went over them with orange. Because the orange really stands out with the red belly. And really makes a nice contrast. It looks good. But the bright spots on a dark background always looks really good. So that's what I did. I know it's kind of hard to see with the glare. And I think I can get away with dark brown as far as my back, probably even my tail fin. But they're definitely really dark down here, so I'm probably going to use black down here, but I'm not going to mess with much up here as far as any dark colors, because I, I kind of like the back the way it is right now. Okay, now I've got my dark brown again. I just want to straighten up the head a little bit. And so I've narrowed my paint down.
And that's about how it works right there. I really don't want to do any more darkening to the head. Just wanted to make sure you get the back too. Just right along the very top of the back. Of course, do the same thing to your other side. going to go ahead and angle spray and get the <clears throat> also get the uh, tail and now I'm angle spraying it's from an extreme upper angle just bringing out every bit of them rays Looks pretty good. Yeah, I noticed the dorsal tends to really be dark. I mean, it's almost dark enough anyway. That's it. Now I've got black. And I'm going <clears> to <throat> bring out my fin rays. It's also good to note that uh, almost all of it. <clears throat> Goes towards the front. Kind of see what's going on, I believe. Pretty much just like that. And <clears throat> We do the other ones the same way. May have to rearrange your fish. But you get the idea. Now we're going to go ahead and do the anal fin. Here we go ahead and take care of these other fans while we can.
And I think I'm going to go ahead and get the tail a little bit better while I'm at it. The tails on some of these species are like super dark. So I'm going to... You know, the inner part as you fade, um, get towards the outer edge, kind of fade out. And I'll show you what we do next. Okay, now I've got my white. And what we do is we go ahead and get our, our, our leading edges of our fins. go ahead and get all our fins this way while we can. Some people use regular brushes for this. It's whatever convenient for you. And even on it looks like it. Oh, okay. Here's what it does. That very end one out there. Now here on the very end, Now I'll show you what we do a little bit later. Okay, I've got my wad again. Now what I want to do, I want to outline all my grooves. I'm going to go around my maxillary. Okay. Okay. A little bit of whiteness right in here. Now some people use brushes for this as well. And I can understand why. Especially if the paint's not doing like it's supposed to. You know, moisture and stuff in the air. I'm running into that right now. But you want to go between the grooves.
But let me try to dress it up and I'll show you what I got. Well, I've been having some uh, humidity issues and just can't get my spray down fine enough. So, I'm going in between the roots with a little narrow uh, brush. And it's a lot easier. Although I usually use a brush for this. And just do the best you can. <clears throat> okay, my reference pictures show those being lit up, at least on some of them. You know, a lot of it has to do with the individual fish or possibly even lighting. But I did notice this on the... Sienna might be a better color, but since I haven't used it anywhere else on the fish, then I'm just going to stick with the bright orange. So this is bright orange, in other words. And what I'm doing, I, I don't want to kill the white out, but I do want to kind of off it a little bit and if I need to I may even go back over it with a little bit more black or something to phase it in a little bit better looks like even a touch you know, showing it right up on the Not gonna get too carried away with it. Okay, I've got my black again. And I was just and the same thing on this side. I guess I'm just going to kind of try to blend it in a little bit without killing it out completely, of course. That's good enough. It still shows and it's blended in good. Okay, I see you. Uh, <clears throat> depending on your fish. I do see uh, mouths that are dark. So I'm going to incorporate black inside the mouth. Just so you can get the lower jaw as well. Okay, now I've got the lower jaw. I'm darkening it up real good too. Not the teeth, but the tongue. And we might even whiten the teeth back up.
but I'll show you what we do next. Now we're cleaning that off uh, one last time. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and whiten the teeth up. And instead of using my brush, I'm just, uh, instead of using my airbrush, I'm just gonna use just a regular little old brush. Now we're ready to gloss it. Okay, now I've got polyurethane gloss. And I'm just going to go ahead and gloss the fish. This is how you paint an Arctic char.